In this video, our challenge is to calculate pi in C++ using what we've learned so far. To calculate pi, we will use the following series attributed to Euler. So we have pi over 2 is equal to 1 plus a third plus a third times 2 fifths and so on. So let's think about how this should be approached before we start coding. Firstly, it's an infinite sum, so we should do a loop that either calculates a certain number of terms in the series, or we can cut off the for loop when the new term added to uh, our estimation of pi over two uh, is too small. So let's figure out how to do the loop structure. Let's calculate the sum on the right hand side. If we use a for loop starting at index zero, we see that the first step, the term being added is one. If we then look at index one, so the second step, we see that the term being added is actually one times one third. So that's the previous term times one third. You can convince yourself straightforwardly that this is always the case. The next term is the previous term uh, times something new. So what's that new thing? Well, let us denote the term in the sum uh, for step M as S subscript M. And we can see that the new term to be added to our estimate of pi over two is SM is equal to SM minus one times M divided by two M plus one. Okay, so now that we have an idea of how to structure our program uh, to calculate our series that estimates pi over two, uh, let's actually jump in and write the code. So as we mentioned previously, one way to stop the loop or to stop the series is just to, is just to define the maximum number of terms uh, that we might add into the series. So let's start this off as an int and we'll set it as equal to 10. Another way to stop it would be to have some threshold for how big the term we're adding to the sum is and then to stop the sum when terms get too small. So we'll call this, uh, so this will be a double, of course, it'll be a decimal number, and we'll call this small. And for now, we'll set it to 1e to the negative 5. So what that stands for is scientific notation, it's 10 to the negative 5. Then we will need uh, our term that will be added to the sum, and we'll call this uh, sm is equal to 1, because that's where it's going to start. And I'm not going to start the sum at 0. I'm actually going to take the m is equal to zero index as we discussed, and I'm already going to add it to the sum. So we're gonna call double sum and we're going to initialize it as one. So next we're going to do our loop. So for int m is equal to one, so we're not gonna do m is equal to zero again. We are, that's already in the sum. Uh, m will be less than the max number of terms in the sum and we're going to in increment m by one, so m plus plus. As we discussed, uh, the next term in the sum, so we've already done uh, m is equal to zero, now we have to do m is equal to one. The next term in the sum is equal to itself times m, the cur our current index in the series, divided by 2.0 times m plus one here, right? So. As we discussed in the previous video, this same line of code can be accomplished by instead writing it in the following way. And we're going to stick to that. It's just cleaner, it looks better. Uh, so the, those two lines of code do the exact same thing, but we're just gonna stick it here uh, like this. Then we're going to add this to the sum and it'll be plus equals SM. Now that is basically the whole algorithm. Uh, but we can we can make this better. So first, first let's tell uh, C out that we want uh, 12 digits of precision to be outputted, um, and then let's let's print our result. So we want pi. So two times the sum is pi, and and let's see how far we get with max terms is equal to 10. How close are we to pi? So printing that out, we get 3.14. Uh, but then we're not we're not quite accurate. So maybe let's, let's ramp this up a little bit. So this this took like no time at all. Let's ramp it up a little bit and let's say we're going to add in a hundred terms just to just to make sure that we can get reasonable accuracy uh, quite quickly. And running this new one, uh, we get three point one four one five nine two and so on. So this is much more accurate. It's much better. Uh, but 
perhaps we're actually doing uh, too much work uh, to get the type of precision and accuracy that we might want. So this is where our friend uh, double small comes in. So the double that's called small, who's one e to the negative five. So let's say we only want like around the first five decimal places of pi for some reason. So what we can do then is we can ask if sm, the thing that we just added to the sum, uh, is less than small. And what this will tell us is, is the terms that we're adding are smaller uh, than the precision that we put in, and it's time to stop the loop. So perhaps we can write C out, and we can tell the person running our code how many iterations went through. So how many, how many steps in the series, or how many things did you have to add to the series such that you got this precision, uh, or this uh, you got to the point uh, where you triggered this if statement. So we can write number of iterations, and we can output uh, we can put output m because that's how many terms we put into the sum, and we can end there. And after that, what we will do is we will do break because we've already calculated uh, pi to the precision that we want to. Uh, we can then break out of the loop and skip all of the extra work. Now, this might seem a little silly. Max terms here uh, being 100, it still takes you know less than a second uh, to, to run. Uh, but this type of thinking can be very useful once your algorithms start to get uh, much more complex. So it's important to exercise them uh, now and get used to them now when you are in a position uh, where, where your algorithms are, are much simpler. So doing that, perhaps we can then structure uh, this a little bit so the output is also nice. And we can say estimate of pi. So right now we want it to the precision of 1e to the negative 5, uh, which isn't so great. So running it, no errors. Um, so we get, so it did the number of iterations was 15. And we got 3.1415, and then we missed out on the 9 here, right? So that is indeed the fifth digit, uh, which is where we started throwing terms away. Um, so, so if we wanted to get even more accurate, uh, clearly we don't need more terms uh, in this condition, right? So we want it to be more accurate. Let's add it to, let's instead change this to 1e to the negative 8. So building that we see that instead of 15 terms, we needed 25 terms. So we need to do 10 more steps. Uh, and indeed, we got more accurate uh, in terms of our estimate of pi. So that's it for this program. It's very simple, of course. And as we learn more things in C++, I'll start introducing more complex algorithms. Uh, but this was just a fun example to show you uh, a bunch of the things uh, that we've learned using ints and doubles, using jump statements, using if statements, using loops, uh, using output. So there's a lot of things um, that may have seemed trivial on their own, but putting them all together, you end up getting this nice, neat little estimate of pi. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope you coded along with me. If you liked the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.